Welcome back guys, today we'll be going over a few cool changes added with the 1.20.5. They added some different uh, attribute modifiers and they changed the way the NBT data is stored within objects. And uh, I'm going to go over some of the few changes and how to update some of your packs uh, accordingly. Um, so one of the cool things I was messing around with some of the, the modifiers. Uh, the gravity one was very fun. So... I achieve zero gravity effectively by having negative 0 0.08. I cannot go higher and I cannot go lower than this point. I'm going shifting down. I can't move. I'm pressing space bar. Oh, I can fly. But then I can't go any higher if I'm in survival. I'm pressing space bar. Nothing happens. Shifting. Nothing happens. We're at zero gravity, right? Take it off, we'll fall. Uh, with safe fall distance, this will then add however many number this is onto the fall damage. So normally in Minecraft, if you fall four blocks, you'll take fall damage. But if you add four, then you need to fall eight blocks to take fall damage at that point. Uh, another cool one, so if we have so zero point, the, this one is the zero gravity. If it's negative, if it's anything above that, you will start to float up in the air. And you will keep going like a balloon. If it is lower than that, um, but to a certain point, so this one, you kind of feel like you're more on the moon, you jump high and you land slow. Um, once I start adding gravity to me, I can still jump somewhat, but I will fall down fast. Um, and I can demonstrate that. Here, let's go over to how to get the item, though, first of all. So when you give yourself the item, instead of the curly brackets, the attribute modifiers are now with the square brackets. So you go to the modifiers, it equals, again, square bracket. And then we're just adding our type is the gravity. Name, gravity, the amount is negative 0 0.8. So if we were to add this to be a positive value, and then we got ourselves one of these, 0 0.8, you'll notice I'm falling very fast and I'm adding gravity to myself. So like if I'm falling, <laughs> I fall very fast. And I can't even get up the stairs because I weigh too much now. Um, the gravity thing is very cool and definitely fun to mess around with. Um, another really, really fun one is you can do the entity interaction range as well as block interaction range. Um, and so a good demonstration of that is... We got our villager here. Let's add make it daytime so we can see a little better. So with a normal weapon, right, you can only have about four blocks distance where you can hit from. We added five, so we can go back five blocks, and we can still hit them from here. Uh, this is very cool. This adds a whole lot more possibilities with that. Um, the other cool thing was custom crafting. So let me go ahead and enable this. Let's reload it up. So now within custom crafting, I set up a recipe so that we uh, put this in. And now we add a bunch of custom information to it. It has a custom name, the enchantments that I specified, and you'll see it has 11 components. Normally it used to say NBT data, has like three NBT tags, but now it's 11 components. And we can go ahead and take a look at that. So if you already know how to um, add custom recipes, if you don't, go check out a video, but I'm just gonna go over the JSON file. In the past, we'd have to use like advancements with then with the function to give yourself the item. But now we just go to our recipe function we have our shaped with our pattern. We put in our items 
And then the result, we can actually have accounts. So we can make it as many as we want. Um, instead of name, uh, instead of item, we do ID. And then for our NBT, we add components. So we can add enchantments, a custom name, custom data, custom model data, if we want to change the texture of it. And then for the uh, this is kind of the format. So the custom data is what used to be known as the custom tag. And that's kind of how the custom enchantments work. So when we take a look at that, right now the editor isn't updated for 1.20.5, so it says it's wrong, but it does work. So now we have to execute whenever we have, whenever we attack something, this will upgrade, update the scoreboard to be one. And then we're looking at if the items in whoever's using this, so that's just everyone that has attacked, we're looking at the weapon.main hand, and then this asterisk just means all the different uh, slot zones within the weapon.main hand. Uh, there's a couple specified. Or no, this is the, uh, if it was weapon.asterisk, that'd be then all the uh, slots in the hotbar. The asterisk just means any type of item that we're holding, as long as it has the custom data uh, toxic, then it will work. So this iron sword here has my toxic thing. So if we do slash data get entity at s selected item, you'll see that our custom data, we have toxic 1, 1b, which matches up what we have right here. And so that is going to run my enchant slash toxic one. So all we're doing is just giving the nearest thing that isn't us poison whenever we attack them, whenever we attack. So to demonstrate that, I'll spawn in a villager and you'll see he gets poisoned and it works. Um, this was the same method that I used back when I had the tags. It just has a new command look to it. Uh, it looks a little longer, but uh, this will simplify it, especially when I get to the armor. I haven't updated that yet. But as you can see, I have to do one for each armor slot. But in now, I can just, uh, when I go to the slot, I can just do armor dot asterisk, and so any slot will be used, so I can reduce this all to one line of code. Um, but that'll be all that I'm covering for today. I'm still playing around with a lot of the updates as information is still coming out.